I believe you've got a little something to show us today, but before you show us the application, <clears throat> why don't you tell us, what is Dr. Chrono? Sure, Dr. Chrono is medical records in the provider, the physician's pocket, but also the patient's pocket, mm -hmm. and all of the staff's pocket. But what I mean by that is the phone in your pocket. Uh, or the iPad, or actually Apple Watch. Um, we coined the term wearable health record, so you can actually wear it on your wrist. You can see all of your patients. As a patient, you can see information about yourself. So we built out a very robust, modern medical record platform that a provider can use, a patient can use, and the staff can use. Everything is super simple. Uh, we designed everything out really, really elegant in a way that a provider could just get started in a few minutes. Uh, it's a freemium product, so anyone can just sign up on the provider end and just start using it. And on the consumer end? On the consumer end, you can also sign up, but generally what, the, what happens is physicians invite their patients. So say you're a provider, you start using the Dr. Chrono EHR and billing and, and platform, you literally click a button and it'll invite all of your patients to the patient uh, personal health record side of it. Got it. Well, let's take a look at Dr. Chrono. Are you going to be showing the provider app or the consumer app here? I'm going to be showing the provider app right here. All right, great. Well, why don't you uh, show us how it works? Awesome. So here on the uh, right-hand side, you can see a list of all of your patients that are going to be coming in for the day. And what we really think about is how do you give a good Apple-esque type of interface? So you can see here we're using a lot of the UI elements that an Apple type of product would use. Uh, it has really, it's, it's kind of sad, but the state of EHR, a lot of the EHRs out there can't take a simple photo. So if you look here, we have a photo of everybody, but if I tap, you literally can take a photo of somebody and then it would upload that photo right into the EHR. I'm going to leave that alone right there. So you can take photos of people's profiles, and this is an EHR that actually can take advantage of the actual hardware there. Mm -hmm. Now, things like Apple Pencil, we've built on iPad Pro, also, the regular iPad that they just launched also takes advantage of this. Mm -hmm. But if you look, so if, say I'm, I'm doing some work, I'm just going to show you, I'm going to go into a visit right here. Once it loads into the visit, this is the actual clinical workflow that a provider mm -hmm. can use. They can completely customize any interface here and they can tap around and select any elements that they want. We also have something called macro buttons here, which is pretty cool. You actually can just tap and it'll load a bunch of information in for you. So going back in, I'll just show you another section here. I was talking about Apple Pencil, but you know, taking advantage of the actual hardware is something that a lot of these EHRs that are out there, they don't do. So how do you actually capitalize on something? How do you actually capitalize? And you can actually have an, like a conversation, me and you right here, and I can just start to draw. I'll select, say that right there. And I'll just start to do that. I could zoom in. Do that right there. What's really cool about this is it actually becomes part of the medical record. So in a sense, you can create a multimedia medical record which has images, it has actual um, video. So you can take videos here. If I go right there, you can actually take a, a video. So it's a really powerful tool that any provider can actually use to actually see a patient. We do connect to every insurance company in the United States. So once you actually go and hit view complete note at the bottom right there, you simply would just tap sign and lock note and that would be sent directly to the insurance company after. Kind of gives you a sense of what it is. Very interesting. How quick is it to train a provider such as a physician or a physician group on how to use this particular application? Uh, it really varies. So we go after everything from like gastroenterologists, neurologists, plastic surgeons, family practitioners. So depending on the provider, depending on the situation, you know, some doctors are coming from paper. That generally uh, is a slower process. Larger provider groups, if say you have a provider group of 100 doctors that want to use an iPad in a medical setting, that generally takes a little bit of time. But if you get a tech savvy provider who's been using technology for a while, they kind of just get it and they just jump right into it. How um, many commercial applications are running right now? How many commercial instances of Dr. Chrono? So we have thousands of medical professionals on Dr. Chrono. Um, we have around a little over 13 million patients, which is roughly 3% of the US population in this software. On top of that, we're doing around, when you hit that sign and lock mm -hmm. button, we're doing around 3 billion in medical claims process per year that they submit through these apps. 
What's cool about this is that we actually mimic the actual hardware here, we mimic it to the iPhone. So I believe we're the only EHR that you can do a full chart, just like on, I did on the iPad here, you can do that full chart on your iPhone. So we have really cool customers that are able to get up, take their phone with them, and literally just start to chart. Have you ever seen a doctor use an iPhone before? No, I have not. You can now. And it's simply by just taking this technology and placing it onto these devices. Everybody has a device in their pocket. They should be using their device to do their charting, right? And there, there, there are a lot of bells and whistles. I mean, I could really dig in. If you start to look into the actual product, okay. I'll just show you one more feature here. The devices that are out today have a lot of features like geolocation, right? So say I want to do a prescription, you can actually go in, let me go right here to Amy Smith. I'm going to send in a prescription. I'll just type in uh, location right here. We connect to insur uh, um, I'm sorry, to pharmacies across the United States, but I could actually ask you as a physician, where would you like the, the prescription sent, right? Okay. The hardware, if the provider is moving and they're outside of their normal location, they can still send a prescription, say they're doing rounds outside. So you have, say, a, like a mobile nursing clinic or something yeah. like that. They actually can leave that office, go to a patient's home, maybe it's a homebound patient, see the patient, ask the patient, you know, where would you like your prescription sent? So leveraging that actual hardware, right? Your phone has this hardware in it. Your iPad has this hardware in it you should be able to capitalize on it. And I think that's where we're trying to think about the future of healthcare. Like where is healthcare gonna go? It should be easy, it should just work for you. It should just work like, what's your favorite app? I don't know. Um, Twitter? Twitter, okay. Twitter, you know, you can kind of find the people around like at a conference like Health 2.0, right? It, it works just for you, you take photos on it, right? it's really useful. And EHR should be that simple. And I think that's like the aspiration that we're trying to go for is, how do you make it so the provider doesn't have to work all night long? You know, we hear providers frustrated saying that they're like glorified, uh, you know, secretaries, right? And, and they go to school to actually take care of patients. They don't go to school to like furiously type on a keyboard looking backwards, right? And then kind of throwing care over at you, they kind of want the software to just work with them. So if I'm looking at you, I can point the device towards you, show you something, maybe some patient education material, send that to you, it, you get it on your iPhone. It's, that's the way that healthcare should work, right? Not, have you ever heard of what a cow is? Yes. What's a cow? In, in a healthcare answer? In a healthcare, okay, you're what, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've heard of it, but I, I don't, I, to explain to the viewers. So a cow is a, a computer on wheels. So it's a device that, really clunky. They, oh, the, they I've seen these in doctor's in, offices, yes, yes, yes. They wheel them in, they put like big servers in there, you know, a desktop. And then they, they type out your, your medical records and everything else. And, and then they're just it. not even looking at you. They're not engaging with you. And how much time do you really get with that provider? 15 minutes, and if they're not looking at you 10 minutes, furiously typing on a keyboard, think about that. Are they engaged? Is there an opportunity for remote interaction with the provider with this platform? Or you said it has video capture and image capture. Can, can as I as a patient, send pictures you can. Of, a, of, a, of an ailment to, you my can. Service pro, to my provider? So it's the same on the patient end where you can have that same interaction. It's capitalizing on the actual hardware. So it does have access to the camera. You can take a photo of like a laceration. Okay. Do I need to come in? The provider may say yes, no. So there is the messaging portion on here where we have like a messaging section in here where you can get to and start to see what is a patient sending you. Great. Um, and any estimate on um, how quickly this can be implemented versus competing systems? In terms um, of days, time, month, like percentages? Think of us like, um, a modern, simple EHR that is freemium. Mm -hmm. So a provider can simply sign up, start using an EHR today, 
If they want our team involved, our team can help them get set up. So our team will come in. That's, that's, that's where the upgrades are and the paid features are, the support of our team. I've seen providers just start charting within you know, a few minutes, honestly. It depends on their, their tech savviness, depends on what they, they're looking to do. If you have a very sophisticated practice, we can build out these forms in a really interesting way where we have like multi-select, single selects, expansion. So say that you want a form that just expands out in one side of the body. You can actually do that with this technology. Um, so I think it's just a, a case by case, but think of us like, you know, box.com. Mm -hmm. You can sign up for box. You can start using the storage right away. And they do have a limit, right, on the amount. Yeah, until you buy well, it, you right. purchase the paid it's product. It's very similar to that, where okay. you can start to get acclimated with it. It's an EHR that lets you write in. It lets you in, you can start to play with it. There's no paywall, right? You can actually touch the product, feel the product, and make a decision off of that. If, do you want to buy it? Do you want to use the free version? You know, there's different feature sets, like EPCS. Um, that's an advanced prescription. That's a paid feature. Right, so there are these paid features like connecting to the insurance companies. That's actually a paid feature. Um, so these are like paid modules for each functionality. Right, right. And, and is that charged on a monthly basis, like a software license model? It is a uh, software as a service model. So it varies from one ninety nine, and it goes up from there. What's really interesting is we also have on our very very premier um, product, we also do something called RCM. RCM is revenue cycle management. Okay. Uh, that is percentage billing, depending on how much the provider makes. And there's clearly certain providers <clears throat> that only a certain size would qualify for it. Uh, it depends. Really? It really depends on the provider and what they're doing. So I would say a good use case is, say you have an orthopedic surgeon, the orthopedic surgeon is busy, they don't have a biller, they may want to pull in our RCM services team, which layers in our billing team and, and our billing software on top of this that actually can get them paid as opposed to them like looking for a biller. But if they have a biller, that's okay. They can use that biller and they plug into this also and they can look at the, like, the medical claims and what's being processed. All right. Thank you, Daniel, for your time today. Thank you to everyone out there at Hens TV land. Have a good one.